It's that time of year again when we start looking forward to what we think will be the hottest trends in road cycling for 2020. Will your prediction be on this list? You'll have to watch to find out. And before we get on with the show, remember that if you want to see more content like this, don't forget to like, subscribe and click that little bell icon so that every time we upload a video, you'll get a notification. Could 2020 be the year that everyone heads indoors for all of their road cycling needs? From the looks of what training brands were pushing in 2019, it certainly seems that way. Yes, with the ever-increasing popularity of indoor cycling apps such as Zwift, it was only a matter of time before the rest of the industry caught up. And caught up they certainly have, with amongst others SRM, Tax and Wahoo all releasing indoor training bikes in time for next year. And yes, we all know the person slash bike radar commenter who says indoor cycling is cheating and that there's no such thing as bad weather, just bad clothing, and that they go out riding even in freezing conditions and even on the moon. Well, we think it's time to stop with the tough cyclist image. Some people actually like to ride indoors. Some people don't have a choice but to ride indoors, whether it's due to time commitments or any other number of reasons. And that is totally fine by us. The important thing is they're having a good time and getting their cycling fixed. They are riding. So, more options for people who ride indoors in 2020. We say bring it on. Don't forget to let us know just how angry virtual kilometers make you in the comments. If you don't like indoor training, you'll be pleased to know we're now heading outside to the world of aero bikes. Or is that the lack of them? After years of major brands designing aero road bikes alongside lightweight race bikes and endurance bikes, we now have aero features being rolled out across all types of bikes. A prime example is the 2020 Specialized Roubaix, which has similar aerodynamic properties as the Specialized Tarmac, and remember, that bike's more aerodynamic than the original Specialized Venge, which was an aero bike. So, is the current Endurance Roubaix an aero bike? Or the new Cannondale Super 6 Evo with a wealth of aero features throughout the frame and components, all in an effort to reduce drag while still remaining as light as possible. The trend to all things aero is now going beyond frame sets and into everything on the bike. Just look at Orbea's new line of integrated bars and stems. Or how about Cannondale's hologram bar stem combo on the new Super 6 Evo and Synapse? This obviously leads to the question, do you need an aero bike at all? We'll let you decide that one in the comments. Right now, gravel is one of the booming disciplines with cycling, with plenty of rides and races popping up all over the world for you and I to enjoy. What might change for 2020 is that, along with you and I, we're likely to see a few more pros rocking up to try these races. EF Education first riders like Lachlan Morton and Alex Howes have already been riding at various off-road events throughout 2019. And with the likes of Trek's Peter Satina leaving the World Tour road scene to ride full-time on the gravel, we can't see that trend slowing down anytime soon. Just imagine the headlines. Alessandro Valverde switches to gravel for 2020 and now plans to retire in 2030. Very, very unlikely, but we think you get the gist. What will this mean for you and I? Well, the races will probably be much faster at the front, which pushes everyone to a higher level. And in our eyes, that can only be a good thing. It feels like we've been saying this for a while, but could 2020 finally be the year that Tubeless goes mainstream on the road? 2019 saw Schwalbe release their classic Pro 1 model Tubeless, and it also conforms to the ETRTO standard. And if you're wondering what ETRTO stands for, it stands for European Tire and Rim Technical Organization. This should in theory mean that it's nice and easy to install, so no more sore thumbs and swearing. Companies like Giant have been selling their bikes with tubeless tires set up and already installed, so we suspect there could be more brands doing the same in 2020. But what are the benefits? The conventional wisdom around tires now leans towards tubeless being the fastest in terms of rolling resistance. So if you're all about speed, that's a tantalizing proposition. With the seal and inside, there's also less chance of getting an untimely flat. So if the cycling industry can finally get tubeless for the road right, we think they're on to a winner. Uh, remember the heady days? We're thinking maybe around 2014, when a 28 mm tire was considered pretty wide. Yeah man, those were fun times. All we had to worry about was 23, 25, and of course the aforementioned 28 mm of width. Well, fast forward to 2020 and POW! You've got more tyre sizes than videos of Peter Sagan doing wheelies on his road bike, and there are quite a lot of those. 
Case in point is Trek's new Damani road bike. And don't forget, this is categorised strictly as a road bike, but it now comes with a clearance for up to 35mm tyres. That's well into gravel territory, and we suspect other brands will soon follow suit. When will it stop? And where is the sweet spot between just right and way too wide for the road? Who knows? But don't be surprised if you see more bikes coming with wider rubber as standard in 2020. What do you think of our list? Did we get it right? Or should we have picked something else? As always, let us know in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the little bell icon so that every time we upload a video, you get a notification. Bye!